Topics such as climate change, environmental health, and environmental justice are being globally discussed. Washington State and the Puget Sound are no exception. One topic at the forefront of discussion is GHG, or greenhouse gas. In the world of transportation, solutions are being sought to reduce or eliminate GHG as quickly and efficiently as possible. Statistically, one of Washington's greatest contributors to GHG emissions is the Washington State Ferry System, which is the largest in the country. As an agency, that is a statistic they plan to change. The governor of Washington State has solidified the ferry system's commitment to this endeavor through an executive order that spells out Washington's goal to have an emission-free ferry fleet by the year 2050. Implementing efficiency measures is nothing new for Washington State ferries, as they have been actively doing so for years, and in the last four years have doubled down those efforts, even looking at options like alternative fuels. Looking around the world for innovative ideas, Scandinavia caught their attention with their use of hybrid electric solutions for short sea crossings. With many other alternatives having been looked at, this hybrid electric leading edge solution is the perfect fit for the Pacific Northwest with its green electricity and lower power costs. The plan to reach the year 2050 goal involves a combination of retrofitting six current vessels to hybrid, building 16 new hybrid vessels, retiring 13 diesel vessels, and the retrofitting of 16 terminals to support shoreside charging of vessels. Washington State Ferries recently completed a long-range plan where we looked at how do we um, accommodate the growth that we're experiencing in this region. Ridership is going to increase by 30 percent, so we needed to take a look at how do we have reliable service, how do we improve our customer experience, how do we manage that growth, and then focus on sustainability and resiliency. Our electrification program addresses all four of those areas. Washington State Ferries operates 21 vessels and uh, each year we burn 19 million gallons of diesel fuel, supporting our uh, 24 million passengers each year. So we're in a unique leadership position to be able to both um, reduce airborne pollution, um, which is, you know, NOx and particulates, as well as greenhouse gases, primarily carbon dioxide. So this has the dual benefit of um, environmental justice and improving air quality in the urban areas, uh, of the central Puget Sound region, as well as, you know, the, the gl global climate change problem. So as part of our uh, plan to electrify the fleet, we're looking at several different um, strategies to do that. We have an aging fleet, so there are a lot of vessels that are going to be going out of service relatively soon. And for those vessels, it's pretty easy to replace them with uh, electric vessels. We also run a fleet that's a little bit undersized, so where we need to bring on new vessels, again, it's easy to bring those electric. But we do have a lot of vessels in the fleet that still have a lot of life in them. Uh, fortunately, one of those uh, classes of vessels is our Jumbo Mark IIs, which is our largest fleet uh, class of vessel in the fleet, and it burns about 25% of our entire diesel uh, for a year. So it's a, it's a low-hanging fruit for us. So that was right about at its midlife, and it's just about time it needed to get some changes anyways. So that uh, class of vessel is going to go in and be our first class of vessel to be retrofitted. So right out of the gate, we'll have a 25% savings on that total fuel cost by electrifying those boats. We performed a feasibility study and we saw that, yeah, this is feasible and it, it really makes good economic and environmental sense. Other options were available, but hybrid electric was the best fit for this ferry system in the Pacific Northwest. Um, hybrid electric is the chosen technology um, because it's really demonstrated its effectiveness in the maritime industry, um, particularly in Scandinavia and other parts of Europe. It's been uh, put in practice over the last 10 years and, and shown to really be effective. The, the things that make it a great fit for ferry system operation is that we have um, routes of a limited distance with a repeatable schedule. And uh, so what we can do is we can, um, we have a dual benefit with hybrid technology. The first level benefit is just energy storage in addition to engines allows you to optimally operate those engines through peak shaving. You can send extra power to the batteries and pull that energy back out when needed and that allows the diesel engines to operate very efficiently. So uh, depending on the route and the application you can get over you know 20 percent improvement or reduction in fuel consumption just through that. The added benefit that's a particular 
benefit for us in the Pacific Northwest is when you tap into shore power. There you're able to draw from the electrical grid and um, rely exclusively on electrical power, um, using your diesels really just as a backup in case you lose that electrical source. In the Pacific Northwest, we have renewable electricity. If a, a good portion of our electricity comes from hydroelectric power and wind and so forth. So it's just a, a great fit for us. A key component in electrifying the Washington State Ferry Fleet is the connection between vessel and shore supplied power to recharge the vessel's batteries while unloading and loading passengers. The connection between the, the vessel and the terminal is really, really key to making this whole thing work. It has to be, number one, it has to be safe. It has to be safe to the, to the crew that are operating and plugging into the, the terminal. It has to be safe to the general public that's on the vessel or that's board, getting ready to board. So um, safety is our number one priority with how that connection works. What Terminal Engineering and our team is trying to do is provide that connection point between the vessels and the, and the grid that, where the provider provides electricity to the terminal. Some of those terminals are located in, in heavy metropolitan areas like downtown Seattle, for example, and other terminals are located in, in, in smaller communities. They're on islands, for example, um, and the power isn't right there at the terminal to be used. There's power to, to run the lights and to do the basic things that happen at that terminal, but there's not enough megawatts, if you will, to charge up a boat. We work with the utility company to then bring in power from those substations that may be a mile or more away from the ferry terminal. And whether that's overhead or underground, we'll work with them to bring that power into our facility and then run that power out across the dock, uh, out on top of the trestle, the, the structures that, that, the marine berthing structures, so that we provide a plug-in essentially for the vessels to reach across and, 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 and insert the plug, uh, insert the wire into from a robotic arm and then charge the boat. Sometimes on a project this large and ambitious, some outside the box thinking is just what is needed. And when it comes to the ship shore electrical connection, that's just what we got. I spent the first 25 years of my career with Washington State Ferries in terminal engineering. So I understand the hurdles, um, what we need to do to permit offshore structures. It's, it's pretty tough. So we were in this meeting to talk about electrification and look at different alternatives in terms of ship to shore uh, powering. And I was sitting there thinking, you know, how can we, how can we do this without requiring a bunch of shoreside permits. And so I said, so have we thought about putting the infrastructure on the vessel instead of creating a bunch of overwater coverage at the terminal? So in a room full of a bunch of vessel engineers, I kind of expected them to say, oh, that's a, that's a dumb idea. <laughs> but actually, they, they sat there and said, hmm, you know, we hadn't thought about that. But I think maybe this is something we should explore further. And so, you know, I, uh, after the meeting, I'm like, well, okay, so they didn't shoot that down. But as we progressed um, and they looked into it, and I think they, you know, really started to say, well, this is actually a pretty feasible alternative. So we know that charging the Washington State Ferries at newly electrified in these hybrid vessels is going to take a new approach. After Nicole and Washington State Ferries came up with an idea, maybe to flip the whole script by having the arm come off the vessel versus from the quay or shore onto the vessel, then we have to start from scratch. Then we have to really take a look deeper into what are the partners that need to come together to think about how that new innovation could take place for Washington State Ferries and how that would look across the whole state ferry system. Is that a conceivable notion for our vessels that go from various terminals to various terminals? So at that point, that's where now the quadruple helix can start to come together. That's where we bring together the technology designers, the OEMs, the manufacturers, the utility companies, and the regulators to start to conceive how this new idea can take place versus choosing an option that otherwise comes off the shelf that wouldn't be applicable for our state ferry system. So 
that's a real challenge because some of these utility companies don't have the infrastructure yet to, um, to, to help us achieve these goals. So we're working closely with them to help them get the funding, get the design started, um, certainly give them our needs. Um, we're looking at battery storage as, a, as one of our uh, solutions so that we have a continuous feed of electricity to the boats. We don't want to have surges in the system. We don't want to have all the lights in Seattle dim when the boat plugs in. So we have to make sure that as part of this effort that we're providing continuous uninterrupted flow of electricity um, for that 25 minutes to charge the boat. With Washington State Ferry's commitment to electrify the state ferry system gives tremendous economic development opportunity for our local maritime industry. We have all of the parts and pieces from the electronics to the OEMs to battery manufacturers and suppliers right here in Washington State. And so Washington State Ferry System making the decision to electrify, build new vessels, put new equipment in place really helps our local maritime industry take that next opportunity and make the green shift of the future, or we often say the blue shift of the future. With all the partners, parts, and pieces coming together, the Washington State Ferries are well on their way to accomplishing this landmark project and setting the gold standard for how a ferry system can be cost-effective, efficient, and responsible, while providing the same high levels of service it always has. Cleaner, quieter, easier, and less expensive to maintain, the Washington State Ferries have the blueprint for a blue economy that will serve the beautiful Pacific Northwest for generations to come. There's a lot of really cool technical challenges that we'll have to deal with that we haven't done before. Um, but I think it's, um, you know, again, it's having the right people in the room to have those conversations, understanding the constraints, again, taking safety as a priority. As long as we have a good working relationship with the vessels, the terminal folks, and the utility providers, I feel like we'll come up with the, the best solution that works for everybody. Hybridizing the, the largest ferry fleet in the United States is a really monumental task. It's one that's going to take a lot of effort from a lot of people, um, but it's also one that's going to benefit a lot of people. It's going to benefit um, the taxpayers of Washington State because this is going to be a more efficient, uh, more financially responsible operation. It's going to be cheaper to run our ferry system. It's going to benefit all of the citizens and all of the travelers and all the communities that we're within because the air quality is going to be uh, much better uh, without our, our ferry uh, uh, diesel running out there. It's also going to benefit uh, the fish. It's going to benefit the aquatic environment as well without the GHGs and everything else that are helping uh, lead to ocean acidification. Um, it's actually going to make for a better environment. It's going to make for a better environment for our workforce as well. It's going to be a safer, cleaner uh, place to work and it's going to be the linchpin that moves us forward to hopefully become the most sustainable ferry service in the entire world.